starting my video in the giving garden here we are in the giving garden hello um hi melissa hi elena <laughs> um we are here on this like sort of overcast still incredibly hot day the wind has sort of picked up seems like maybe there's a chance of showers but we never really know these days but it looks like there's a thunderstorm in our midst um, here we are at the Giving Garden, uh, where we grow lots of food every year for um, local organizations like Mana Community Kitchen, Starlight Center, East Hampton Community Center. This year we were also working with CSO Respite, um, and we're working to provide food and grow food in creative regenerative ways and that are good for the soil and the land and the people working with us and also um, to provide food when people can't otherwise get it in the store or grow it themselves. Um, yeah, and so the first, I guess, so we've been starting recently with the land acknowledgement. And so I wanted to start again um, acknowledging this land that has been stewarded for thousands of years before us and um, the various tribes that lived here and uh, grew food and many different varieties of food and also foraged on the land. And I've been, um, what have I been really grateful for in foraging lately? I've been um, picking linden flowers, mm. basswood flowers, which is a tree that's really beautiful around here. And um, people have been using it for medicine and um, for tea and different, different ways of using that. Uh, tree and the flowers for a long time. So that's my land acknowledgement for the moment. And I wanted to um, uh, sh give a little shout out today uh, to um, Leah Pinneman and Soil Flyer Farm. Brought her book out here for our little crew um, to for some reading material. Um, this is such a comprehensive book. It has like so many different plants and ways and practices of growing those plants. And it also has um, different storytelling and wisdom from different traditions and what it means to farm while black. And Leah Pinneman is an amazing teacher and farmer and she has a farm in Grafton, New York called Soul Fire Farm. And um, I've been learning from her, went to a few different events and follow different things that she writes. And I know you have too, Melissa. Yeah, it's a great resource. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, always have more to learn from Leah Pinneman and would love to and I've actually never made it out to Soul Fire Farm I think I tried to go for several different community work days and they all for some reason well before the time of the pandemic I wasn't able to go and now I don't think there's gonna be any in-person events there for now um, okay what are we talking about today Melissa we are talking about cover crops yep. and mulches. Yeah, so many different things. So it's July. and Plant succession. Yeah, there's so many things growing and blooming. And um, behind me, you see the garlic is almost ready. Um, it's, you know, the outer leaves are turning brown and dying, which means that it's like almost ready to go. We, I had my first cherry tomato. Our tomatoes are popping. Um, they're... Yeah, we've they're been green just, right now, so that's right why now. you're having a hard time spotting them. <laughs> yes, the, there's like only a few select cherry tomatoes ready so far. Um, and it just feels like, yeah, I wanted to quickly mention how we transition after we harvest a crop. And every time we harvest a different crop, it's different, obviously. But today, um, since we have this example in front of us, we're, um, well, can so... We just harvested carrots, and you can see a few remaining ones that got left behind. Not for any good reason, that we just we forgot We'll still them. use them. We'll still, yeah, exactly. Yeah. The rest are in the cooler. There's probably hundreds of pounds of carrots. So, so this was transitioned yesterday. This was, there were two carrot beds, and then this became a lettuce bed. And so we want to make this next bed into a lettuce bed also. Because we're transitioning a different crop, right? We don't want to plant carrots into the same carrot bed, at least when we can help it. So that a different crop that needs different nutrients and that grows in a different pattern it doesn't have a long root right and it's like more shallow growing that that can grow in the bed so oh, elisa says the garden looks beautiful thank you very much um yes it is it's really enjoying all of the rain that we have been having recently and everything's been growing really beautifully 
so so this tool if you remember from uh you know an episode a few episodes ago we featured the broad fork and demonstrated how we prepare a bed so after we harvested the carrots okay so look under my feet right what is this under my feet this mulch happens to be carrot tops so we don't use our carrot tops for most of our purposes when we get the liver so we put all the carrot tops in the pathway so that we can have a mulch in the pathway because we don't want to have to weed the pathways and then um broad forked in the bed which, and we already did this which you did this morning yes and then put compost and then we brought wheelbarrow full of compost and raked in the compost into the bed so voila um then we have this pre um this landscape fabric that lasts for a long time they say like well i think it can last for like 10 years if you treat it right and i don't have my stakes well they're over there but you know basically we're just going to stake it down and it's going to have these pre-cut holes in it and then we're going to plant we have a few lettuce trays that actually we got a generous donation um, from Atlas Farm. Um, Atlas Farm gives, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, we can uh, you know, use some rocks. Um, uh, Atlas Farm gives us um, some of their seconds of plants when they are finished with the planting. So I got some beautiful lettuce, um, lettuce starts that we are using in these beds. Um, otherwise, we also grow our own successions of lettuce starts, but this time I got the donation. So, all right, so that's kind of, and then we have our trays over there, and actually later this evening, or later today, I'm going to plant the lettuce when it's a little bit cooler. I know it's not totally ideal to plant lettuce in the middle of the sunny day, so we uh, will wait, but it's actually cloudy. You gotta do and then we have these sprinklers which we can use to, our irrigation system yeah we can use to like cool them down we just use those for like very particular things oh yeah and you pointed out before this is our next succession of, of carrots second generation carrots yep. right here yep and then hopefully we can sneak in one more generation even though i know that it's we're cutting it close before the fall because they take a long time to grow um, these carrots that we just harvested, they're beautiful. When did we plant them? Um, April 20th, I think, something like that. Um, yeah, and then there's one other kind of, kind of bed transition thing we wanted to talk about, which was that cover crop. So some beds go directly to another crop, right? So the carrots are going directly into lettuce, and that's very convenient. Um, and what else? Sometimes we do like lettuce directly into beets but then here i wanted to check out this anyone know what this little cover crop is um fast growing really summer loving heat loving it's called buckwheat and so what um yeah what's special about buckwheat is that it grows super fast and it can cover it just provides a great cover. And then we're gonna let this buckwheat grow. This used to be lettuce. You can see some lettuce remnants. Um, and we are going to let it grow. It probably grows to like that tall before it goes to seed. Okay, I think we're back. I think we lost our connection there for a second. Sorry about that. It happens. <laughs> um, so we're talking about buckwheat and how we, um, how we're gonna crimp it. We're gonna like use our um, our handy dandy uh, metal stake and we're gonna walk over it, which we did in another episode with our rye. And we're going to crimp our buckwheat and then we're going to be able to have it as a mulch and we're gonna tarp it. And um, what we were talking about this just before is that like we were gonna plant garlic in these rows, but garlic doesn't get planted until um, November. Or Octo late October, November. So, a couple comments and questions. Um, yeah. So, Pat loves the purple cracks. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, 
<laughs> wondering if you plant different color carrots. Oh, great question. Um, we stick to orange here in the Gimmon Garden, but not for any reason other than that's what people, it's like a predictable carrot. It's what people re can recognize. It's They're, very sweet. It's very sweet. I plant, these were the variety mochum variety. It's a really awesome, sweet, long carrot. Um, but you know, maybe we could always try growing some rainbow carrots. And then Alex wants to know when your next workday volunteer day is because they would love to come and help. Cool, great. Well, um, we, someone from our team can be in touch with you, but we, um, we actually do work days every week, twice a week or three times a week. Um, they're limited to small groups, but it's actually good to have an opportunity to talk about it. Yeah, so Monday and Thursday morning, we, we're here from eight to 9.30 and we do a big harvest and maybe there's some weeding and there's different tasks. Melissa's here for that mm -hmm. most days. And then um, what happens oh, on Wednesday evenings? That's for people who prefer evening hours. Except for lately on Wednesdays, we've been having a streak of thunderstorms. So um, I don't know what will happen tonight. But we're still on as far as I know. But if it gets too, if it's too wet and rainy, then you can't really work on projects. Like you don't really want to touch all the plants, like maybe stake in some cucumbers or something because they're wet. It's much easier to transfer disease when you, when you work with wet plants. Yeah, thanks for asking. We'd love to have you. Yeah, it would be great. Um, yeah, someone can, Maybe someone can even comment in the thread uh, with our calendar link because we have a calendar link that's for the Giving Garden and it's really super easy to sign up um, with that. So, um, so we're talking about buckwheat. We're going to crimp it. We're going to tarp it. We're going to plant garlic. Um, yeah, so garlic is getting a little bit turned over here. And then, oh, I guess the last thing you did, we, we did think that maybe I could seed some buckwheat on camera. Oh yeah, maybe you could want to look at the buckwheat seed. Yeah. It looks like cool seed. That is cool. Yeah. It's cool seed. Um, and this is a cedar. It's called the nice. Earthway Cedar. And, um, and in this bed, yeah, so what happened in this bed before? We had radishes in this bed. Then we had lettuce and actually you can see the stumps from last year's kale yeah. and right next door we have some flowering cilantro yes. which is which, a great pollinator habitat yeah maybe it's more like um yeah bee home <laughs> slash um coriander you know we're growing some coriander but i let so once i let the cilantro go to flower we don't necessarily want to harvest it anymore but i found that the bees just adore it and so it makes it worthwhile to me to keep it. Yeah. Keep it around because we want those bees. Should I just do like one row of this maybe? And then we could. Sure. Uh, are there any other questions? Yeah, if there's any questions or comments, feel free to put it in the chat. Yeah. Um. So this handy dandy cedar, which hopefully will work. Um, yeah, it's working. So sometimes I have to actually check. If the so seed you put is the going seeds in here. Yep. And then um, and then I'm gonna actually I'm gonna just go. We broad forked this bed already and we would have raked it smooth, but because we're just doing cover crop, I think it's gonna be okay. Um, yeah. Mm, normally just for the sake of the demo, we're gonna do it right now. And uh, but maybe on a normal occasion I would rake it, take to take the time to rake it smooth. Um, but you can see I walk along. And then make a straight line. So if I had taken the time to rake it smooth, which I think I'll go back and do right now, then it wouldn't get as bumpy and then I would be able to pass a little bit more smoothly. But as you can see, well, you can't quite see, but what's happening with the cedar rolling along is it's dropping the seed at the correct interval. And um, yeah, these are really cool. Also, you can notice I'm walking in the path. I'm not walking in the bed and I can just walk right to the side 
and then I'll make several different passes and make about like, I try to fit one, two, three, four, five, five or six rows of buckwheat in here because you can really fit a lot, maybe even eight. Um, just want to get a really nice, uh, dense stand of buckwheat. Um, another question yeah. about um, things that you can grow in planters when you have limited space, if you don't have a yard yeah, and totally. you want to do some container growing. There's so many things you could grow. Uh, you can, I don't necessarily want to point the camera over here to my weedy parsley, <laughs> but we could look at this weedy parsley, which can grow so well in a container. The parsley is actually really growing very well amongst the, amongst the weeds. And then tomatoes, there's so many different kinds of tomatoes and they all like, they, I mean, no, they don't all like to be in a planter, but there's many varieties that could really thrive in a box, you know? Yeah. Um, what else? Oh, there's cucumber varieties that are called like, I think like tight spacing or like, they don't take up a lot of space and they like to grow up maybe a little trellis or a little vine and, um, and they can exist in a planter. There's probably a lot of everything. I don't know about planting carrots in a planter, but I bet you can if it was a deep enough one. Yeah. Um, Same for potatoes. If you have a deep bucket, you could yeah, do totally. some potatoes. And like maybe multiple stacks of buckets or like, I know people maybe have done it in like old barrels with the bottom cut out with the with potatoes. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's all we've got today. Unless all there right. are any other questions, but um, I think that's it for all now. Right. Okay, well, thanks for seeing some of how we're transitioning things around here. And um, thanks, Anna. Yeah, see you next time. Have a great Wednesday. Yeah, bye, everybody. Bye.